Hey there folks, welcome back, David Eon here, and today we are talking about some comic book cleaning and restoration, something that I've been asked to touch on. I don't do comic book related videos too often, but I can do them. I've been doing this sort of thing for a long time, so just sharing the experiences a little bit. And today we're taking a look at the use of the so-called magic eraser, which is made by Mr. Clean, the Mr. Clean magic eraser. And there's also a generic version made by Walmart for their like great value brand. It's essentially the same thing if you wanted to spend like a third of what this normally costs. And it's a essentially a glorified sponge. This is basically a sponge and what they do is they use it to remove some of the dirt from a comic book. That's essentially what people who are into comic book restoration use this for. Is this a good idea? Are there pros and cons to it? There's absolutely pros and cons to it and whether or not it's a good idea. You'll have to determine that for yourself. It is a useful tool for this type of purpose and I will be doing some demonstrations here really quickly um, but it's a tool that can be overused you can do a lot of damage with this if you are not careful keep in mind it is a sponge and that means it is abrasive and you're rubbing an abrasive object on your comic book now, who am I in relation to this? Because you watch Open by Chance and we have like action figures and toys and statues and things like that. And you don't see me do comic books too often, but I do have a long history with comic books. I just don't get into it too much on the channel. I started doing restorations actually in the early 90s when I was loosely affiliated with NEC. That's New England Comics back on the East Coast. And I was considered to be somewhat of a freelance expert at the time I went back and forth to the two stores they ha had in Alston and the one store they had in Brookline I don't even know if those stores are still there I haven't been in Massachusetts in a long time I don't even know if NEC is still there <laughs> so but they had several stores and I used to go to those and I do some grading and some restoration for them kind of out of the back door if you will back when no one in the mainstream heard of grading or restoration. <laughs> Nobody was doing it. Then, of course, CGC came along, and now everybody's an expert, right? But anyway, magic or not, this is still abrasive. It can still scratch and scuff the finish right off of your books. And that's why this is how you start. If you've never done this, these are the kind of books you want. You see these are just raggedy. They're reader-only copies, really no value really to them you know it's not like this is a copy of batman number one that in this condition would still be worth a fortune these are books that aren't worth much at all you see the cover's been cut on this so this is how you want to start you this is the kind of book that you want to use to experiment with so that if you screw it up you're not going to be heartbroken because if you used this and you used it wrong on a book that's worth a lot, you're gonna be so upset, I won't even know what to tell you. <laughs> anyway, before you get started, and here's something, I looked at a few videos on this subject before I decided to go ahead and do this, and I'm surprised at some of the things that have been omitted with using this sponge. And I'm gonna tell you the first one here, use a mask. Put a mask on, a, a dust mask, to protect you from the fine dust particles that are going to come off of this thing. And you're like, what are you talking about? This is a device that's meant to be used while it's wet. It dissolves as it's being used. Here's one that's been used. And you see it's just kind of dissolving away. And that's because this material rubs off as you use it. Where does that material go? Take a look. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little cloud of dust coming up out of this sponge. That's the particles of the sponge itself. And it's not good for you to breathe that. Now, anyone out there work with flooring, you know, or tiles, you cut vinyl or wood flooring, or you cut tiles for a living, or ceramic flooring, you know what I'm talking about. There's a very fine dust that comes up out of it that you're supposed to wear some kind of mask to protect you from the dust because that dust can affect you negatively. 
As a matter of fact, it can cause rather serious upper respiratory infections if you're exposed to too much of it. Again, this is something that's meant to be used wet, not dry. So when you scrape away with it, a, a mist of dust comes up out of the sponge. You inhale that. Have you ever used one of these? If somebody's used these before and you find yourself with a really dry mouth or coughing or sneezing, now you know why. And there is a risk to that. So you probably want to wear something on your face, honestly. And I sound like I'm being overprotective. And people have scolded me in the past on when I've talked about comic books and they say, oh, you're going too far. Yeah, well, you know, you can just go ahead and ignore that if you want to. Um, I, I'd rather be careful. Now, another thing that you're going to want to do is use cardboard as a guide because you don't want to willy-nilly just be rubbing all over this book. And I'm going to show you here. You can see that there's a lot of good discoloration on this book. And you do not want to cause more problems than you're solving when it comes to trying to clean this off. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is put a piece of cardboard on the inside, like that. That way, as I'm rubbing away from this, right, I'm not pressing these edges down because where are you going to press them down into? It's all soft through here, so you're going to warp the edge. So you put a piece of cardboard on the inside of this, and I'm being a little rough here because, you know, this book is junk anyway. You take a second cardboard as a guide to block off the colored portions. And the reason for that is because these sponges are going to suck the color right out of this book. I know you've seen people, you know, willy-nilly just rub away, and you can go ahead and do that and pull the color right out like I am right here. And the other thing that's going to happen, and I don't know how well you can see this now, you can tell where I just rubbed and a grater will be able to tell too. You're going to make the color dull, you're going to pull the color off, you're going to remove the finish. You know how there's a glossiness to comic books? You can rub that glossiness right off of your book. There's a lot to consider. I would personally not use this on an area with color. I just wouldn't do it. You can if you want to. And you can experiment with that. I know people are like, oh, I'll use it just to get a fingerprint out. But you're going to have streaks. Again, this is abrasive. This is abrasive. I would recommend not scrubbing back and forth, but going in a single direction. And towards the edge of the book, it, I don't know how well you can tell because I'm going kind of quickly. I'm not necessarily going straight up, I'm going up and out so that I can keep that edge sharp. How hard you bear down, that's up to you. You know, as you get comfortable with this, and I don't know if you can see the dust coming off of this, and that dust coming off again is the sponge itself shredding into a fine particle as I go. Where there's little chips like you see down here and I don't know how well you can see that there's actually now a difference between this lower edge and this outer edge but these little chips here you can cause even greater micro tears or even pull a chunk right out of your book if you're too rough while I'm at this when you get to these corners I would take the cardboard out and just kind of brush towards the edge in order to clean that because if you keep the cardboard inside there's a risk of creating a crease against the edge of that cardboard that may be difficult for you to press out if you're going to press the book but you're going to put a crease in it regardless also you see that there's a fold right here I just knocked it back in this was dog-eared at one point. If you're cleaning away from this edge, and there's a huge risk in my doing this right now, you want to pull 
away from the book and out towards the corner. But because this is so soft from being folded for so long, there's actually a risk of pulling that edge right off. Again, you're going to have to get comfortable with this and learn how to judge how you want to apply pressure. Just how much pressure are you willing to apply to the book? So again, you know, just try to rub out and away the level of pressure that you use entirely up to you. Watch out for the dust. And you can see it like accumulating. I just scooped a little up there so you can see better. And I always keep one of these handy. This is a makeup brush. I use these for cleaning the action figures and the statues. Pull that dust away, especially if you want to press your book because it's going to look like craters <laughs> if you press. And you can see some minor improvement there. It's not fantastic, but there is some minor improvement. And I wish I had a better example to show you, but this particular book is very brown and goes all the way through. And there's so much on the inside brown, it wouldn't even be worth it to try. And of course, anywhere that you rub on the black part, it's going to come right off. That that black is going to rub right off into the sponge. So it's entirely up to you. And if you have a stain that goes all the way through, like you see there's a stain right here, and I know that's on the other side of the book. Do you see how it went through? You're not cleaning it off. So keep that in mind. Now this works better on older books than it does on like a modern book because the more modern the book, the glossier it is. And this is going to pull the glossiness, that shine that's on the cover of these comics. It's gonna pull that glossiness right out of the book. So the more modern the book is, the greater the risk of pulling color or rather pulling the glossiness out of it. You can see it a lot better right here because this is more dirt smudges. How that comes right out. Let me put the guide back. A more modern book would be a lot more obvious that the finish has been rubbed off. And you'll see scuffs and streaks from the sponge on a modern book very easily. But like I said, it's entirely up to you. You can experiment with this. On the inside, you know, you might can go back and forth to do a circular motion. And you see how some of that dirt came out of there. Again, this is a very yellow looking cover. So it's hard to tell, but you can see also that where I did clean, the finish is duller, whereas there's more of a glossiness to the rest of the book. And again, I mean, these are in really crappy condition, so it's hard to tell too much of what I'm doing here. But I wanted you to see the pros and cons of it so that you don't just get a sponge and just start rubbing on your books without thinking about it. You can see how soiled that is right there. See the dirt. And we'll try to pull some of this dirt out. A lot of people would prefer to use a gum eraser. Now, I'm not opposed to the use of a gum eraser. Some people are paranoid about gum erasers. 
because they're sticky, but they're not going to stick to the to the pulp. They're made for the pulp. See? It's a lot better. In areas like this, you'll have to concentrate and pay very close attention to what you're doing. Again, I would not want to rub a colored in area, only areas that look as though they're supposed to be white. See? This book, it's showing up a lot better than on the previous one where I've uh, rubbed some of that soiling off. Another thing that you might want to do afterwards, or in place of doing this all together, is to just kind of buff it with a cotton ball. But again, you can see what I'm doing here. And I invite you to just go ahead if you want to try this. Get yourself a magic eraser or the generic equivalent. And get some really crappy reader copy books. And just experiment. That brown's not going to come out, of course, but I did pick off a lot of that dirt and smudging. You can kind of see it on there. Brush it away. And hopefully you can see the difference. I hope that color gradient is coming in well enough for you to be able to tell. And you take a uh, take a cotton ball and you can literally just buff the cover careful around those edges. When you come to an edge you probably just want to move away so that you don't cause a wrinkle. I'm using my bare hand here because I'm not worried about this book. If it was a book that had a good value to it, I'd probably go like this so that I don't get my fingerprints or any oils from my hand on the book. It doesn't need any additional damage done to it while I'm trying to restore it. And take a look at that. That was a clean cotton ball and it's pulling up some of the dirt that's accumulated on this over the years, some of the discoloration from the bags that the comic has been stored in. And that's basically how I do this. And I actually get fairly decent results. And depending upon the book and the age of the book, you know, if the book is really brittle, you probably don't want to use a magic eraser on it at all. Again, you don't want to bear down hard. Do go ahead and get some really junky reader copies like these and experiment with your ability to clean these covers. Get a feel for it. And then you can start doing it a little bit more seriously. You can see those browning stains. I'll do one more here in the middle of this one. See how comfortable you are bearing down. Now in here I can go back and forth a little bit more. On the edges, again, you probably just always want to go in one direction. If it's water stains, it's probably not going to come off. Because you know how sometimes there's water stains splashed onto a cover. Again, I really cannot recommend using this on a more modern book. 
because they're far more glossy than the old ones. The type of uh, paper that's used in the modern books. There's all that dust. Again, please do cover your face. That one, it's kind of hard to tell. It is an improvement, but it's kind of hard to tell because there is a lot of water stains there, those brown spots. So what do you think? You want to give it a try? They don't cost that much. And you might be able to do some nice restoration on some vintage books, at the very least getting around the borders. I'll show you one that I just did. Let me flip this over. You see how nice and white this one is. And this one had some age spots going around the edges across the spine and down the bottom. And I was able to polish that up nicely. I, I don't have a before picture. I wish I could have shown you. But I just did this one not too long ago. And that's uh, Captain America 252. It's a really nice copy and that's why I wanted to get that discoloration off. So there is a lot of potential with the sponges. But again, just please do be careful. I hope you found this helpful if you were considering using these sponges. I hope you learned something. Um, please do give the video a thumbs up if you did. If you would like to see more on restoration and pressing and other comic book related things, please let me know in the comments section down below. Give, a thumb, give it a thumbs up, easiest way to show your appreciation. Subscribe if you're new, share it if you can, all of that good stuff. Check out some of our other videos. We do a lot on this channel, not just comic books. And hey, what can I say, but thanks for watching, and we will see you again soon.